Welcome to Blue Marble Geographics, Ask the Experts. I'm Rachel Landry, and today I'm joined by my colleague, Amanda Lind, an application specialist here at the company. Today, Amanda will be talking to us about how to create a continuous DTM or digital terrain model in Global Mapper. All right, Amanda, take it away. Thanks, Rachel. So the Create Grid tool can work with any combination of vector data that contains elevation data. This can be LIDAR, a vector point cloud, straight vector data with elevation points. It can be um, 3D model features or even a mesh. It just has to have that elevation attribute. For today's example here, I've loaded a point cloud. This is straight from USGS of um, Woodward County in Oklahoma, if you're curious. It's been pre-classified, so you can see ground classified points and unclassified, but that's not necessary. As long as you have um, elevation data, you can use the tool. Now to open the tool, I'm gonna to come up to this top toolbar to click on the Create Elevation Grid icon. Here, Global Mapper is gonna ask me which layers I would like to include in the grid. I'm gonna go ahead and leave all of my LiDAR layers checked and click OK. And here it's gonna load the Grid Creation Options dialog. Now, the first option here is the layer, what you would like the layer to be named. I'm gonna go ahead and just label it as Generated Grid, but it's always a good idea to label your layers clearly so they don't get confused in the future. The next option is what kind of grid type you would like to use. Now the default and the most frequently used option is elevation values, but you can also, especially since I'm working with LiDAR data here, you can choose to create a grid out of intensity values or height above ground or even in DVI. Anything that you choose from here is what values your grid will have, so it doesn't necessarily have to be elevation. The next option here is grid method. Now, if you don't have Global Mapper Pro, the only option here is a triangulation grid or a grid of 10 points. But if you have Global Mapper Pro, then there are a few different bidding options that you can choose from. Now, to describe what bidding is, imagine, if you will, a grid set, a set of cells spread across on top of your data. And for each of those cells, Global Mapper will take an average or a value of points, uh, a value from those points and give that to the grid cell. So a single value to represent all of the LiDAR points within that cell. So the minimum value, if you were creating a DTM or digital terrain model and you only wanted to look at the elevation value of the ground, you weren't looking at the vegetation or the building, then you can choose this minimum value DTM option. And what that would do for each of the grid cells, it would take the minimum value or the lowest elevation point within that cell and that would be the value of the grid cell. Other options are average value or maximum value if you wanted to create a digital surface model. So if you were looking at, looking at the vegetation or the buildings. Other options include median value or variance. And variance is basically how much change in elevation is included in that cell. So if you were looking at the edge of a cliff, there'd be a lot of change, a wide change, a higher number from the top of the cell to the bottom as opposed to if you're looking at a parking lot, which would be very flat and there wouldn't be very much variance at all, so it would have a lower value. Now the next option here, again, because I'm looking at LiDAR data, is the option to filter um, points by classification or elevation. So you can choose if you wanna look at just a selection of elevation points to filter out and just focus on those points, or you can choose to just look at a specific classification. So for today, I just want to create a grid out of the ground points. So I'm going to uncheck everything except ground. So with that selected, Global Mapper will ignore all of the lake points, the um, unclassified points, and will only create a grid from the ground points. The next option is grid spacing. So how large you want your cells to be. The first option is automatic spacing multiple of point spacing. Now a point spacing is going to be different for every layer. It's basically how far apart your LiDAR points from each other. You can see this information by left clicking on the layer within the control center and looking at its metadata. The other option that you can choose is to manually specify the grid spacing. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to one. So each cell will be one meter by one meter. The next option here is the grid no data distance criteria or how much interpolation do you want between each of the points? So for example, if I scroll all the way over to tight, that means there won't be any interpolation, there won't be any estimation of values between points. So this lake feature here, if I were to leave this on tight, it wouldn't have any interpolation over it. So it would just be a hole within the grid layer. But if I wanted to cover over it and estimate the value the elevation of that lake based on the elevation of LiDAR points around it, I could scroll all the way over to loose and that would cover up all of these holes. 
But for today's example, I'm just going to leave this near the middle here. Now there are some other options that again aren't necessary, but we have them. If you selected a vector feature that had 3D elevation data, you can check this first option here to use a 3D area line feature as break lines. And that what this does is it overrules the LiDAR data elevation. I don't have a vector data selected here, so that's why it's not selected, but that option is available. We do have a tiling tab. If you're working with large amounts of data, instead of creating one giant grid, you can choose to export the grid into tiles. So break it up into sections and how large those sections are can be specified by this tiling tab. Again, not required, just an option. And the next section is grid bounds, where you can select which area you would like to create the grid for. By default, Global Mapper will use all of the data, but because I have a large amount of data here, I'm just gonna work on the center here around the lake. So I clicked on the draw box option, and I'm just looking at this area here that I have selected. Another option within the grid bounds tool, if you select an area feature before opening the tool, is down here, this option to crop to selected area features. You could choose this and the grid would just be created within that selected area feature. With these settings selected, I'm going to go ahead and click OK to run the tool and to create the elevation grid. I'm going to go ahead and turn off my points layer so we can see underneath it. And there we go, Global Mapper's created a grid with the elevation values. You can scroll in a little bit, we can see that there's a hole where the lake was, where there wasn't any data, and we didn't interpolate to fill it. I can grab the feature info tool up here to, to click on an individual cell, and we can see the height of that cell and its location. Now, because I created an elevation grid, the default shader here, or how it's colored, will, is based on elevation, where we can see the height, the highest and lowest height over here. But another option that you can use is to change the shader. For example, there's a slope shader, where instead of being um, symbolized by color representing highest and lowest elevation, here we have a black and white diagram that shows the steepest and flattest elevations. And we can, again, use a feature info tool to look at those features as well. So we can see the height of the cells because it's an elevation grid, but we can now also see the slope in degrees and percents. Amanda, thank you so much for talking to us about that workflow. I think our audience will find it very informative. To learn more about Global Mapper and Global Mapper Pro, please visit bluemarblegeo.com today. And as always, thank you for joining us for Ask the Experts, and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode.